So, Walter, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. Where are we right now? We are in New Jersey, New Brunswick, New Jersey. Okay. Yeah, before our show with uh, featuring Incognito, Mesa, and Tom Brown, uh, Jamaica Funk fame. So, yeah. Um, you just got back from Capital Jazz? Capital Jazz Cruise, yes. How was that? Amazing. I love Capital Jazz Cruise. Uh, thank you, Capital Jazz, for everything. New people that I met were, were extremely nice. Um, old fans were really, really nice, and, and you know, just it, just the whole experience. Just the water. I mean, the weather was great. Um, I stopped finally stopped rocking, so I'm cool. It's just a, it's just a, I'm just very very grateful to be where I'm right now. I would guess life is a lot different now that you retired from. Uh, quit. Okay. Well, there's a difference, and, yeah. and here's here's the distinction that I made, and I heard this the other day, and it's put very well. When you retire from something, they get tired of you. When you quit something, you got tired of them. So, and I don't mean, it, well, I do kind of mean it that way, but you know, when you take the bull by the horns and say, you know, I want my life to be this way. The last interview we did, I looked at it in its entirety and that helped me make my decision because the way I was talking and speaking, I was like, you know what, I've quit already. You know, it's time for me to, to, to move on. So, um, I think that was one of the better, better decisions I've made in my life. Uh, it's empowering. Uh, one thing I've learned is that nothing has really changed out here. People play and sing for blood. You know, people play and sing for their mortgage, for their rent. So what we were teaching them in an academic situation had almost absolutely nothing to do with what's going on out here. I mean, you know, people, you know, it, it's heavy. It, it's heavier than it was when I was doing it, just it by itself before I became a teacher at Berkeley College of Music. So there's really, I don't really see a curriculum that will actually prepare, you know, for what you, you know, what you're gonna see out here, because it's just, I mean, it's just, it's deadly, man. I mean, even on a cruise, the one thing that was interesting to me on the cruise, I was on day seven when I played. Everybody had seen and heard everything by day seven. You know, you got Eric Benet, you know, Incognito, uh, uh, BWB, blah, blah, blah. I mean, you had a whole bunch of artists playing. By day seven, people were tired, their ears were tired, mine were tired. I was tired just, you know, walking on the boat and hearing everybody. So by the time I played, they had heard all the notes, they had heard all the phrases, even if I was the best saxophonist of all time. <laughs> on day seven, nobody would have given a damn, you know, because they just so fried from hearing so much. So I learned something there, you know, and that was, and I, I, I kind of pushed too hard during my performance, because I was like, yo, here I am, but well, let's do this, and boo, boo, and, and they were, you know, people were into it and stuff, but I could see that they were tired, so I had to kind of pull back a little bit and talk to them and pace myself, and that's something that I, you know, that I remembered, uh, not remember, something that was new. And I said, you know what, they're fried. They're, they're, they're fried from hearing all the music. So now to put, now that I'm back on land, I have to think about that in its totality too because people are just tired of hearing notes. People are just tired of hearing people rap. People are just tired of hearing, I mean, a lot of things don't mean that much, you know, anymore because there's so many people doing them. That said, what am I going to bring to the table that's going to be different? And for me, I think, um, I want to simplify, you know, and I want to make sure that my story is told in a manner that makes it interesting to a certain extent, but makes it um, palpable to the average listener. So they get something from it, they can taste it, they can feel it, they can say, you know what, that's my life too. You know, let me pay a little bit more attention because he's saying something that I want to hear or that I'm living. That's what I've learned since I've been away, since I've quit the institution, is that they're, they're two, I've always thought that they were two separate worlds. But it really is, and then you know, and uh, people out here for, for for blood now. But do you think now that you don't have both worlds, both teaching and also touring, and you can just focus really on touring? Do you think that you have gained more insight into what your audience wants? Like, are you? Do you feel like you've tapped into a more receptive channel to your audience? I think that um, I'm all in now, so I think I can listen more. And I think that I can investigate more. Um, I think that I can um, be a better servant, if you will, to them, because you know I need to be. You know I don't have the luxury of, you know, uh, I left a million. I, t I tell people this because I, I tell, and I don't. I'm, I'm not worth a lot of money, but I left a million and a half dollars, you know, probably close to a million, two million on the table if I would have stayed there for the ten more years. And at this age, I'm still way too early for Social Security and all the rest of that stuff. So now it's incumbent upon me to find a way to make make ends meet for myself every month. 
So that means I have to be a better student than ever before. I have to be a better listener to my audience than ever before. I have to be a, a better consumer too. You know, just you know, just you know, wh you know, who are they? What's buying? You know, what are people selling? You know, selling what are they buying? I have to be part of that whole uh, that whole scene so that I can, uh, you know, pay the mortgage. You know, mm -hmm. um, so I think that I'm in a position now. If I listen correctly, if I if I close my mouth and I don't play as much and don't sing as much, just listen to what's going on, listen to what's moving them, I can now position myself to, to kind of be in that lane um, of people who are um, who have who have done better over the over the course of years in dealing with that simply because it was their only their only lane. Mine was education and it was performance as well. Now it's only going to be performance and recording and writing and producing. And I need to be in that lane, that strain that, that says, okay, yo, this is what we want, this is what we need, uh, and, and, and be, the, be one of those people who can accommodate those people. You're kind of getting into uh, an experimental project. For me, yeah. Yeah. Want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah. Um, Black Streams is, is going to be um, uh, an EP that deals with groove based music that, you know, kind of comes from. You know, the machine, kind of like chill hop, hip hop meets improvisation, jazz meets, you know, um, you know, it, it's just, I've always loved groove music, groove bass music. And I did, I used to do a lot of it when you know, I was in the 80s. But now, you know, especially because, you know, you introduced me to chill hop, and I'm seeing what's possible, and I'm seeing, and I'm, and I'm, I'm loving it. I mean, I, I'm a consumer. I, I drive down, you know, when I was driving the other day, I just sat there, man, just got lost, and, and somewhere, I, I forgot even where I was going, you know, because the music just took me somewhere. And I wasn't forced to do something I didn't want to do by the music or by the lyrics. And I love that. And But it, it still had my head not, you know, rocking back and forth. And that's the only thing I wanted. I don't want to be, Sax Meditations was just go to sleep. Bring your blood pressure down. Chill. You know, don't do anything. Drink a glass of wine. It, the day is over. You know, that's it. Just calm yourself. With Black Streams or with, you know, with this thing that I'm doing now is look you can do what you're doing this is a nice little supplement or addition to you know whatever it is you're doing it's going to chill you out but it's not going to put you to sleep you can be able to rock your head saxophone is there to help the groove and it's, it's actually flip because usually when I when I do stuff I play a lot and the saxophone's up here it's like the icing on the cake and you know whoosh you know look at me look at the saxophone blah 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 but this time the saxophone will be, will be positioned within the, the music and that's and that's that's different for me because I'll be playing and I'll be writing so that the saxophone is actually a part, a part of the rhythm section, part of the beat, you know, and that's a little bit different than most people approach it. So that, that's, that's different for me. And I'm looking, and actually the, the first single will be dropping in January. It's called Don't Say a Word, and it's already being well received. Are there any students that you, you remember or that are doing well that you can kind of... Um, actually, there was a student that... I had a Berkeley who I just saw on, on the cruise, on Capital Jazz Cruise, who I knew was going to do great things, and I knew she was a great person. But she had gone through some very, very difficult life situation. I mean, really, really difficult life situation. Her name is Nicole. I, I'm not going to use her last name because I, I don't have permission. I think about Will, and I think about courage, and I think about just, you know, people that I'm most proud of, or people that I've, um, that I just remember for the rest of my life. Not so much for, well, for what they could do musically, but for who they were as people, she it's like she's up here now and the rest of us are down here. I mean, whenever you have to deal with what she had to deal with, and she's come out, she's toured with like, you know, heavyweights like Justin Timberlake and others. You know, when you do something like that, when you when you battle something, you know, and fight the way she fought to, to get back to music, get back to her life, I mean, that's, you know, um, I think, I, I know that, that that's something I've never, really experienced before in any of the people that I'm not any of my colleagues so she would have to be on top um, yeah I mean really after that you know everything else is kind of like way down here because it's about music yeah you know and music really for me now it, 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 it enhances life it's not life I mean based on what I'm you know I, you know I had a little um, I had a life scare too and um, uh, we talked about it actually uh, my stints put in and once you go through something like that and, and you, you look through that window of mortality, you know, and for, for me, I looked at it earlier than most because th this happens to people in their 70s, 60s and 70s. You know, I mean, it happens to people younger and, and older, whatever, but 
when you have to when you look through that window of mortality, not it's not it doesn't it's not an academic exercise anymore or or, or a conversation where you think, well, oh, life is good and then we're going to die. No, 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 no. When somebody tells you, look, you're this way, you're this far away from clocking in, you know, and it's real. Um, you're never the same. So you have a decision to make. You can fight, change your life, be courageous about it, or not even be courageous, just survive. Mm -hmm. And then do, then whatever else you do is supplemental. Mm -hmm. You know, because you don't, you, you know, you, you beat odds or, or, or you're, you're, you're fighting just to, to live your life. So now, my goals, and I'm assuming I'm speaking of her to things, I don't know really what her goals are, but my goals are much different. And I get up in the morning, the first thing I say is, thank God for another, I'm, you know, my eyes open. You know, um, and I enjoy that day. I'm in every moment now, you know. I breathe, you know, and whatever decision I make comes out of that breath. I know, you know, no, no man's going to rush me anymore. No woman's going to rush me anymore. I'm going to do, you know, I'm going to take my time and, and enjoy the moment. And, and because, I mean, when I meet people like that who have had similar experiences and some much, much worse than my own, it's important for me to understand that and all of us understand that we only get one breath. Nothing else is promised. That breath right now that you just took could have been your last. You know, so that's the way I want to live my life. And I, when I think about people like Nicole, I mean, I'm, I'm, I, I think about how important that is. Now that you can just focus on music, are you inspired to be a better musician? No, I, I get you. Yeah. Um, no. You know, it, what's interesting is that it's all about the moment. You know, when I was in my, when I was in my formative years, teenage years, 20s, 30s, I wanted to be the best. I wanted to be one of the best. I used to pray, God, please make me one of the best saxophone players ever. Please make me one of the best saxophone players in the, in the world and all that kind of stuff. And then when you get close to that goal, you know, you're like, oh, not close, I shouldn't say that, but when you get better and better and better and better and you used to move, moving, moving more and more people, you know, and then you get sick like I did, um, you, you, everything changes. So those goals are no longer the goals, not for me, those are no longer the goals that I have anymore. You know, I want to make sure that I'm, you know, try to be as compassionate as I can, as caring as I can, um, as happy as I can be um, where I am. I don't have long-term goals anymore. I don't have short-term goals anymore. Um, uh, you know, today I'm going to write something, hopefully. No, not even hopefully. I'm going to sit at the computer or sit at the keyboard and I'm going to play a chord, a couple of chords. If I feel like playing another one, I will. If I don't feel like playing another chord, I won't. That's how I am now. You know, I, 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 my mortgage has to get paid, so we got to play the gig. Mm -hmm. You know, but after that, you know, I don't know what I'm going to do. You know, so I don't know what I'm going to do next year. I don't know what I'm going to do tomorrow. I don't know what I want to do, you know, uh, the next 15 minutes. But I want to be, I want to make sure that whatever it is, that it makes me happy. When you decide... It's time. I'm gonna just step away from music. You know, I don't want to do music anymore. Right. Not because I don't love it. It's just I, I'm done. Right. What do you want people to, to to remember you? I don't care if they do or not. And, and I mean, I'm being honest. I'm not trying to be you know slick or whatever. Mm -hmm. But um, I really don't care if they do or not. I think a lot of people would would answer it indifferently. But you know, I had a good run, man. You know, I worked 30 years at the institution of higher learning, dealing with music, teaching people music. You know. Um, I had a recording career for 30 years, 10 of, 10 of which, you know, I was the owner of the music that I produced, which is, you know, which is great for men like me. Um, you know, my goals and my aspirations, whatever they were or are, have been attained. I don't really think that there's anything um, that I want to do. And I really, and if people uh, remember me, fine. If they, you know, if I've touched them, that that's the important thing. If I've touched them and I've made them happy, if I pulled them through something, that's great. Um, that's it. That's it. You know, that was that moment. You know, and maybe they go back to that moment and they feel it. Whatever. That's great. But as far as anything else, you know, I, you know, I, I don't need to be remembered for anything. Um, that's it. You know, because I'm happy. You know, it took it took a life scare to let me know that right now. I did the best I could. I left it on the table. Done. This is Walter Beasley saying thank you so much for being a part of this interview. You can get my music online um, and all the different, you know, iTunes, Google Play, uh, CD Baby, and all that. Or come go to Facebook store. I'm there too. 
um, Twitter, Instagram, all that I'm there. So just thank you and have a wonderful, wonderful day. Because you never know, you know, just never know. So just be happy, be in the moment, and be grateful.